This is the London Air on RTE 2XM. My name's Nessie and today I'm joined by a lady who I'm delighted I actually got to hear her music. Um, about three weeks ago, I was sent a track called Fool's Gold and it reminded me of Kate Bush. It had a huge, huge sound to it. And I wanted to find out more about this artist because this is a debut single. And for me, something of this standard as, as a debut is just ridiculous, to be quite honest with you. She's from Northern Ireland and I'm delighted to be joined by Blanet. Blanet, thanks so much for joining us on the show today. Thanks for having me. Now, you're living in London. How are you doing? I am indeed, yeah, living in London. So, I mean, things are opening up here again. Um, I... Uh, Went to the pub for the first time uh, last week, so that was that was wonderful. Oh, really you, you took that brave step. I haven't done I that did. yet. <laughs> I'm, I, I'll be honest. I'm one of these strange people. I'm not a huge pub fan anyway. Um, yeah. But the, one of the things that I've been really missing would probably be, apart from going home, obviously, um, I like going to see a movie after work on a Friday. Oh, very nice. Mm. I like going to see a movie and um, haven't been able to do that. But it's it's kind of like, how are you feeling about all this, actually? Are, are you ready to go back to gigs? Are you ready to go into big crowds? That kind of thing. I don't know so much about big crowds. I think, I mean, I can't wait to get back to doing gigs i mean i've done i've done gigs online and that but it's just it's just not the same when you can't feed off the audience and see and see what they're feeling like you can see their comments but it doesn't really it doesn't really mean anything no, like, obviously, obviously i mean it does but it's you feel detached i i, I as a viewer i'd be like that yeah. as well because i would feel that one of the things about gigs is that you get the feeling of being there and you're immersed in it. You don't get that online. Yeah. And while I obviously try to support um, artists and if there's someone doing a live show or whatever online, um, I would try and support if I can. But I just, I prefer an actual gig rather than, you know, just looking at a stream, to be honest. Yeah, it's 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 amazing the difference, I think. Like the emotion is so much easier to communicate in person as well, um, but yeah, I, I I'm really looking forward to getting back to doing to doing live gigs again. So you moved to London a little while ago, um, but I, this is your debut single, and I, I'm as I said at the at the top, and I'm stunned that this is a debut single. Have you been involved in music before this, or how did you get to this point? Yeah, so I've I've been involved in music from quite a young age. So I um have, you know, did grades and that in, you know, piano and flute and violin and that sort of thing. And um and was involved in a lot of choirs as well growing up. And um then I got into Irish traditional music because I did Irish dancing for a while, so I was very connected to the Irish traditional music scene anyway. And then um when I came into my later teen years and at university, I started you know, playing smaller gigs and doing covers and that sort of thing. And I did try to write my own music, but I, I never I never liked what I wrote. wrote. I just didn't think it was very good at all. Um, and so then when I moved to London in 2018, you know, the reason that I moved here was I want to do music properly. I'd been in small towns in England. I've been moving around in England for a little while now. Um, and so I thought I need to be in London. That's where the scene is. And um, so it was late 2019 maybe actually August, September or something like that, I um, a song dropped out of the sky to me. <laughs> and um, it's one of the first songs I wrote. It's called Hollow. It's not released yet. Um, and then the second song that I ever wrote was Fool's Gold. And um, yeah, it just came, came to me in the night and I wrote it down and um, that was it. And as soon as I wrote it, I thought, I feel like this is a bit of a special one. So uh, so that's that was the first, first release. And as soon as I could get my hands on a producer after COVID. So yeah. Yeah, so... You've been working with the Duncan Duncan Pym on this. Mm -hmm. um, now he has he has uh, worked with some amazing amazing people, um, yeah. and you the, the mastering engineer as well. Which I think on this the mastering is really important. People forget about mastering and just 
little things like that. But um, Jonas Wessling mastered this and he's worked with Newton mm-hmm. Faulkner and with Gabrielle Alplin. And uh, Alplin, I should say, Alplin. Um, but when you are a new artist, I think sometimes you can get an idea in your head of how you want to sound. And it's not mm-hmm. always easy to transfer those thoughts that in your that are in your head to a producer to get back what you actually want, if that makes sense. So you yeah. kind of have to put put the formula in, say, hello, Mr. Producer, add your magic and get back what you're what you're happy with. So how yeah. did it work with you? How did how did that process work? Yeah. So I came into Duncan with um, just the piano line and the vocal line, which is I'd been performing the demo for around. Um, I'd done it at live gigs when I wrote it. And then obviously during COVID, I tried to perform it online as well. So I was kind of so comfortable, I think, with the um, with the demo version of it. I, I was almost a little scared, to be honest, to take it in and do something completely different with it. But um, so I went into Duncan and I said what I would really love from this and what I knew that he could already do because you know I'd listened to the other people that he'd worked with and loved his stuff um I said I wanted to create this kind of a big wall of sound with it and um, like like other artists like Bon Iver and Novo Moore and people like that create with it where it feels like it's swelling and the background is almost um it's 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 part of the song but beyond it as well it's like a whole moving background I wanted to create a world for people to get lost in with the song and um so I kind of came in with this very vague advice to him and said you know I want it to be layered I want this big wall of sound I want particularly what I wanted was a lot of electric guitar stuff because I only do acoustic stuff and I knew what electric guitars could add to it um and so I came in with that and then he was able to help me craft that and he came in with ideas as well. So what we basically did was shove a load of ideas in and then start pulling it apart. Like I remember one day um, I came in because I worked with him for a week on it and he said, I've added in this really cool sound and he played it to me and I was like, God, I really love that. It's kind of like this clinking. You can just hear it. it's very, it's very quiet in the track, but it adds to the layers. I said, that's amazing. Like, um, what is that? How did you think of that? And he said, well, I was eating the cereal this morning and the spoon clanked on the bowl and I thought, God, that's really good sound. So I just recorded it and put it in. I was like, brilliant, love it, let's go for it. Um, so it was very much like a collaborative process, um, pulling it around. But uh, I think I think sometimes that's what works best with stuff like this. I love hearing little stories about sounds and stuff like that. I mean, was it, uh, what's his name, Enrique? Uh, I can't remember what song it was, but the start of it is actually like oh, a ping, ping pong. pong. Th- th- yeah, th- yeah, yeah. Enrique Iglesias, the ping pong song. <laughs> yeah. Is it called a ping pong song? I haven't it's, a yeah, clue literally. what it's called. But I, um, think, I don't know whether they did that afterwards, but I always knew it as it's the ping pong song. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So you've been working together and you've been putting all this together. But as a new artist, especially now you just don't want to put one song out there because it's kind of a world where you have to have a plan you have to know um you have to know what what's going to come down the line for you so how far ahead have you planned with your music yeah so i've I've received like a lot of conflicting advice on this some people you know say you need to release an ep and then some people say it's the album you should be working towards and other people say no it's singles you just got to do singles all the time so um i think also there's a pressure sometimes to release stuff very quickly and i sat on fool's gold for a long time because i wanted to find the right person and the right fit and the right to do the right thing with it so my plan is to release I think two more singles this year I would like to do um, and properly focus on them and craft them so that everything that I release is to the standard that I, I want it to be um, rather than just putting something out there for the sake of it. Um, but I'm hoping that strategy works. <laughs> no, I think it's important that um, I think one of, I think it's really important that artists still have some sort of I don't want to call it a quality control but it is almost a quality control you have Mm. just because you have 10 songs that are ready to go doesn't mean you need to release 10 singles in a year 
or 12 mm. singles in a year or whatever it is or release an album a year or do whatever. Um, if you, as a new artist, if you're honing your sound and you want to give yourself the the space as well to know what you're doing, find out and look at how you're growing as, as an artist, as a marketer as well, because you have to market your own music. Um, yeah. You need that space to take everything in, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And there was loads of things I learned about, you know, my my first release, like what I would do again, what I wouldn't do again, how much I'd need to plan it. Um, and I have a, have a day job as well. So trying to fit that around everything, it's, it's, it's always a beast to release. So I think I think that's why I also want to leave a little bit more time for myself to make sure that, like you say, that the song is good quality that the execution is good quality because i think if you rush it sometimes it's just it's just all a wee bit manic and as well as everything else you still want to live life because you want to have something to write about do you know that's so true and um i so during lockdown i find it i know a lot of other artists i think find themselves very creative during lockdown i lost all of my creativity to be honest i find it very very difficult to write um, because I didn't have any any normal life to feed off of and anything that was really happening. Um, and so I tried to use that time to, you know, think about what sound I wanted or think about my brand and try and build my social following. So I tried to focus on the business side of it during lockdown. But you're absolutely right. And I think things opening up now, I can already feel that I'm a bit more creative because I can bounce off of things that are happening outside and in, in the world and happening to me in my life. Crazy. You're from Northern Ireland. Do, have you managed? Am, yeah. So you, the, the restrictions going from England to Northern Ireland are slightly different. You still have to, they are, they're yeah. a little bit different. It, up to a point, it was a little bit easier for you um, to travel. Did you get home at all, seeing as things no, were? I didn't get home, you know. I, I just wanted to be just extremely careful about everything. So it's my, my granny's back in she's in Belfast and so I just didn't I just didn't want to you know I just wanted to be the safest that I could and I thought I will tr- I'll travel when I can travel and um I'll see her when I can so um yeah yeah I haven't haven't been back home for a wee while I know yeah it's a tough one it's a tough one for us yeah um especially like it's only an hour away but it, you might as well be the other side of the world right now it's it's a bit of a pain um, I know have you found any advantages of London and lockdown? I tell you, it's weird. Weirdly, London and lockdown is has been kind of eerie in a way. I don't know if you find this as well. Like when you go and walk around major monuments. I mean, the great thing is that there are no tourists, so you can see things <laughs> clearly for the first time. Um, and uh, but otherwise, it's just been really nice actually discovering loads of green spaces near me, which I'd never never bothered venturing to to be honest um and i've just got to know all the walks around my local area so i was always just traveling on the tube away from the house never never exploring anywhere near me so i haven't been on a tube now i am thrilled to say i haven't been (laughs) on the tube for 13 months Um, my god yeah i'm absolutely you're all the better for it (laughs) absolutely thrilled about that and i until last week i it was four months since I was in central London. Wow. Well, not even central London. I went to Victoria. It's yeah. the last time I was at Trafalgar Square was last June. It's crazy. It's crazy. That is mad. And it's like, it's not that I'm putting off going. It's just I don't have a reason to go. Yeah. That's it. That's it. It's just there's no reason to travel. So why would you? Mad. Mad, mad, mad. Um, There's so many things that uh, an artist has to look at. But when you when you hear your sound, um, I think it can be or it could potentially be quite soundtracky. Have you thought about the visual side of what Blonnet the artiste is going to be like? So a lot, of, a lot of people have said this to me. They said, you know, it'd be perfect in a film or for TV um, or something like that. Um, and it's funny, the other day I did a, I did a live version of 
Fool's Gold um, with a couple of guys who they set up and filmed it and stuff for me. And um, one of the guys is like, do you know what I see with this track? I just see like a pan out at the end of the film. Like that's it. Just I hear it's a track and I just think pan out. <laughs> it's like, I think that's actually a pretty good description of it. Um, but yeah, I think, I think especially with Fool's Gold and what I wanted to create, especially at the end, with those drums and, the, and with that building of the kind of the, and the stacking of the vocals. Epic is, is, is the word that I would love people to associate that with, like something epic happening in a film, the climactic moment, um, the pan out at the end. Um, that's, that's what I'd love the visual side of my, of my music to be associated with. Excellent. Excellent. So, what what I suppose we've spoken about, you know, getting things together and releasing stuff and all that. And it's still a really awkward time for an artist to be planning anything. You can plan all these things. You can potentially have live gigs. You can do whatever. But you have to keep going as you as, as you said, whether it's now that you, you can go outside and there's a little bit more creativity or feeling or, or whatever. A lot of these things are all to do with an external audience, though. Mm. Um, and getting your music to people. While it's really important to get music to people, how important is it if you just make music for you and no one else? That's an interesting question. Um, I think for me, often the two things are inextricably linked um, because I I don't know who I'd be without music and without that outlet. Um, and whenever I find I haven't played like music for a while or haven't sung in a while, I feel like very like pent up and then I don't realize it's because I like I haven't sung in a while and I'm like oh that's why I needed that emotional outlet and that expression but for me the ability to share that with other people is is so much part of it as well like I remember one of the songs that I connect to a huge amount is um a song by Ray LaMontagne it's called Empty and I remember listening to it as I was walking through the train station and every single word that he said just resonated with me so much and I thought my god I can't believe someone else has felt like this and not only that has put it into a beautiful song and just I mean everything that he writes to me is just pure poetry but I thought I can't I can't believe that has connected with me so much and that's what I would love for my music to be able to do as well um to make someone feel like they're not alone and to kind of put that out there in the world and know that someone else will have had the same experience so in that way the two are kind of really linked for me I find the the whole creative process fascinating because people always seem to work in different ways, whether it's a lyric, whether it's like a little guitar lick or whatever, a little, you know, melody that you come up with, I say, as I drop my plectrum. Um, how do you work when you are sitting down when you mentioned that you you sit down and you know you're writing and that the first couple of nights you got a couple of fantastic songs out of so yeah. how is it the lyrics first is it the music or how does everything come together for you for the most part it's the lyrics that come first often I will be usually upset about something <laughs> and my, I find it has to sit in my mind to process it and I'll be thinking about it for a few days and then the lyric will pop out and sometimes it has a tune attached to it as well so I'll make a voice memo or I'll, or I'll write down the lyrics to it um, and then it's it's very strange and I wish I had more control over this but sometimes my mind will just give me things and when it gives me it I need to jump on it and run with it whether that's lyrics but it's usually melody that I, that I have to jump with because the lyrics I find much easier to work with so I remember one time I was I was at work and suddenly something came to me and I was like I need to I need to, I need to get that down or I'm not where it's gonna go so I just went to the kitchen to make a cup of tea and while I was making the cup of tea just sang into the phone <laughs> because I was like I need to get that down um 
so yeah a bit of a mishmash but usually the lyrics first and it will become because i will have been mulling over something in my mind and then um and then the tune i will have to wait for it to drop out of the ether how would you describe blonde the artist that's interesting um introspective um passionate um but also I think it's it, it's interesting in a way because I think quite a lot of my music is quite serious or can be or is quite you know um soulful in a way but me as a person I love to have a laugh um and so sometimes I think those two things are kind of juxtaposed amongst each other but um I think often my music is is the expression of the things I don't really say to other people um so I guess in, in that way Blonde the artist is is the extrovert showing the introverted side well I think that was fascinating <laughs> I I genuinely can't wait to hear an album's worth of material and maybe talk about the album potentially and uh, sit down and, and work through more of your music and chat to you about more of your music um, I absolutely love this as I said um, I found it really interesting that you mentioned that there was Irish music in there as well because some of some of the when I was listening to it a few times it could almost be somewhere in between Clannad or Anuna and people like that mm -hmm. as well and I heard that in there and I was like fusions of different styles and everything and I, I really enjoyed it and, and it was great to see that that you know that someone that can do that in a contemporary way as well and yeah. do it in, in such a way that's not stuck in uh, nothing against traditional Irish music but when you say traditional Irish music a lot of people will think diddly eye die stuff yeah. and that's not all that Irish music is and there's a lot more to it and I think it's great that you can bring elements of of your background into to what you're doing as well if people want to find out more about you, find out more about your work and and, and where they can find you, what, what, where is the best place to go online or where should they look? Sure. So if you're on social media, I'm at I am Blonid, B-L-A-N-I-D on all social media platforms. I'm on YouTube and SoundCloud at just forward slash Blonid after it. And I have a website as well www.blonard.co.uk Blan, thank you so much. No, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.